I want to end with a story. In October 02, I signed a contract with Broadway Bank for the property, the 13 acres that we have in San Antonio. We purchased another eight, so we have 21 acres. But at the time, I signed the contract for 21 acres. And we had to pay $20,000 per month. One thousand, uh, 20,000, 16,000 rand. 16,000 rand per month. 160, sorry. 160,000 rand per month for that property payment to the bank. And we had the grand sum total money of zero to pay. In fact, when we first wanted to negotiate to buy that property with the seller, he had signed a contract with a company that was selling tractors. And he, uh, he said to me, I said to him, this property is ours. God told me it was ours. I had a dream. See, I actually saw it. Anyway, um, and the Lord even showed me in the dream who actually held the title deed to the property, which bank. So anyhow, all that in the dream. Nevertheless, so I knew this is our property. But I said to the seller, I said, you know, we like to buy it. He said, okay. He said, pastor, how many people do you have in your church? So I said, none. <laughs> Just looked at me like a cow at a new gate. Like, what planet do you come from? So I, he said, well, how much money do you have to pay the monthly installments? I said, none. Are <laughs> oh, you want to buy this? I said, yes. So he said, well, I've sold it to a tractor company. They're going to put, make it a showroom. So I said, look, I'll tell you what. I'll call you in 30 days because that deal's going to fall through. And then I'll come buy it from you. So he said, fine, call me in 30 days. So I called him in 30 days. He said the deal fell through. <laughs> he said, and what's more is the bank have repossessed the property because I'm bankrupt. I haven't paid the mortgage for seven months. And they are auctioning it in seven days. So I said, well, take me, let's go see the bank. It was Broadway Bank, the dream bank I had a dream about. So we went to see the bank. So we said to the owner, what was his name? Anyway, uh, it was 10 years ago. So Charlie Cheever. Charlie Cheever. Mr. Cheever. So, uh, I said, look, I'll tell you what, how would this work if we paid the seller the month installment, then he could pay you, and then he could actually be in the deal, and then he doesn't have to let it go, he can do the sale, he doesn't have to auction it. So he looks at us and he says, he says I have no idea why I'm doing this. That's fine. Get your lawyers, get his lawyers, get the bank lawyers. We'll all get them together and work out a deal. So I signed the contract. Now I have got to pay $20,000 starting January. Okay? So anyway, um, we had a little bit of money. We gave him a deposit. But we also signed on a property to build our own home. We had some of our own money and we put that down on the property to build our own home, which is signed. So construction's going on in our own home. And um, so we committed there. Now we're committed here. My advice is don't do this at home. <laughs> without supervision, adult supervision. So now anyhow, um, 
But I, I've been spending much time in prayer about this, Pastor Nikki. I, <laughs> I was being led by the Spirit. So, anyway, then, um, so we were committed on two fronts financially. We had a little bit of money, two of our own, to put some carpets in, buy a few chairs, make it look presentable. So we started church. I actually, we hadn't started church yet. This is October. But we were fully committed. I came here October 02. And I was on my own in our home here in Janesburg. One morning, I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning with this terrible, terrible burden to pray. Terrible burden to pray. And so I went through to Natalie's bedroom and I put, because she's in America, no one's there, put my knees on the floor on the carpet and I put my hands on the bed and I lay on the bed and I began to pray. You know, sometimes I had my elbows on the bed, other times I had my face on the bed and I began to pray in tongues. I said, the Holy Spirit, I don't know what this burden's all about, but I have this terrible burden to pray. And uh, it's two o'clock in the morning. Now say this, a burden to prayer is a call to a God encounter. Say that again, a burden to prayer is a call to a God encounter. Now I say this, a burden to prayer is the grace of God manifesting to bring you deliverance or provision. One of the two. So I said, dear Holy Spirit, according to Romans 8, 26, you make an intercession for me according to the will of God. Please intercede through me now about this burden, concern this burden, and pray the will of God into existence concerning this burden of prayer. Because the Holy Spirit giving me the unction now. He's calling me to prayer. So I began to intercede and travail in the Spirit for about two hours. And after about two hours of praying, I begin to realize that I am the cause of a problem. I am the cause of a problem. You see, at that time, from the time we left Johannesburg, the church here began to lose people. People scattered. The attendance started dropping drastically. Sales were closing. And the finances were drying up. Our income was way low, lower than our expenses. We had quite a bit of money saved up for this building. And we had to now start using our savings to pay our normal running expenses. Or else I had to let staff go. I had to fire pastors and staff to cut our expenses. Now I'm letting you know if you're a pastor, if you let your staff go or your pastors go, then those sheep are without a shepherd and they leave and they stop tithing. That's what happens. Without shepherds, some of the sheep scatter. Your income drops another level down. So it doesn't end. Once you get in the cycle of firing, firing pastors and staff, your income goes down. Your attendance goes down. That's the way it works. So you have to have a God encounter to solve this problem. I'm the problem. I started realizing this in my heart. Now I begin to weep before the Lord, and I'm praying. I assumed that the attendance was going down because we had left, or that we had, in, those year, in that year I was flying back and forth, two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks here, two weeks there. But even so, uh, because of this, I thought that that was the problem. And I'm lying on my bed praying in tongues, my arms outstretched, and I began, the Spirit of God came on me with such travail and unction that I prayed for four hours, but I prayed with tremendous unction, crying out to God, praying in tongues, 
And I know that I'm the cause of this somehow, and I didn't know how. And so I'm praying in tongues, praying in tongues, because I know God sent us there to San Antonio. I have no doubt about it. He gave me a bunch of dreams about what to do there. Anyhow, and that the whole thing's working so perfectly. And yet, yeah, it's falling apart. So um, in the natural, I'm thinking it's because we've expanded to San Antonio. And then, after four hours of praying and crying out to God in the Spirit, worshiping God, praying in tongues, this burden starts to lift. And a tremendous peace floods my heart. And I just lie there on the bed, still quiet before the Lord. I don't know, about 15 minutes, just bathing in the anointing of God. And the room's quiet. And all of a sudden, I heard this voice speak to me. And it was throughout my whole being. And it filled the room. It was audible to me. It wasn't audible to anybody else in the room, but to me, it was audible. And it was loud and clear, and it rang through the room and through my being, and this voice said, you have been forgiven. Thank you for watching Dr. Theo's YouTube channel. We will continue to offer encouraging and life-changing highlights from Dr. Theo's past, present, and future series and messages. Please take the time to like and share the videos. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.